Okay. Town of Pembroke Park Special Commission meeting, Wednesday, December 18, 2019, at 6 o'clock p.m. Pledge of Allegiance, please. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Oh, roll call, please. Commissioner DeVille? Here. Commissioner Cohen? Here. Court Commissioner Jacobs? Here. Vice Mayor Clark? Is absent. Mayor absent Mohammed? Absent for personal reasons. Here. So, no, well, we're going to skip around to number two. Um, execution of 45th year CDBG ADA restroom construction, public works. Before you get to that, uh, are the addition of commissions or calls? At all. Um, hold on, let me see what that is in. Sorry. I'm sorry, I was going by the one that was okay. printed. Yeah, okay. Uh, I'd ask that uh, the commission delete uh, the matter relating to the pension board matter um, uh, and the life insurance policies. Being that this this matter. Hold on, she can't. You, what's oh. your mic? I'll, I'll make sure we're. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> is that okay now? Yes. Yeah, okay. I asked that the, 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 the delete um, item G. Uh, relating to the uh, the pension board, actually, this matter should be approved first by the pension board and then presented to the um, to the town commission. So uh, that can all be done at, at Janu in January. I spoke with uh, uh, the pension board um, uh, provider uh, with Gloria Rosen, and Ms. Rosen agreed that it, there wouldn't be any problem uh, having this uh, matter uh, taken under uh, consideration. Are there any other changes to the agenda? Anything that anyone wishes to add or delete? Motion to accept the agenda, which is, has two items, A, one and two, under F. Motion to accept the agenda with the two items. I second. Roll call, please. Um, Commissioner DeVille? Yes. Mayor Mohammed? Yes. Uh, Clerk Commissioner Jacobs? Yes. Uh, Councilwoman uh, Cohen? Yes. Okay. Public comments related to agenda items. Is there anyone from the public that wishes to speak? So we'll go on to um, F2, which is new business, execution of 45th year CDBG ADA restroom construction. Public Service Director Todd Larson. Yes, uh, we received our our agreement finally from uh, CDBG, and they needed it before January 10th, so we need to get it approved. Uh, what this is is the uh, restroom facilities that we discussed before over in the park would be the additional restroom facilities. They're ADA compliant. They will be built as a permanent building, not a prefab. Uh, the it, things in the in the agreement have been corrected so that we can do it in that in that method. And uh, we will we'll bid it in such a way as to reduce the cost to be down in the neighborhood of what the uh, actual grant amount is rather than the maximum amount that could be expended. So we're doing a new custom-built restroom. Is that what we're doing? Or are we doing the modification? No, it would be a custom-built restroom because we're, we're looking at the possibility of tearing that building down and replacing it. Mm -hmm. So therefore, we will need a, another restroom at the, there anyway. Okay, and so you have a location um, picked out for where it'll be? It'll be on the east side of the park. Uh, we can set the exact location later uh, okay. when we do our, when we set up to do the uh, bid, we can go out there and, and verify the location that you think is best. Okay. 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 So, um, Having a resolution for this? Yes, you do, Mayor. Um, it's a, a resolution of the Town Commission of the Town of Pembroke Park, Florida, authorizing the town to make and enter into the agreement between Broward County and the Town of Pembroke Park for funding and administration of the 45th year Community Development Block Grant Program for ADA restroom construction, and authorizing and directing the mayor and appropriate town officials, town staff, to execute and deliver said agreement for and on behalf of the town, providing for severability, superseding conflicting resolutions, and providing that effect.
Motion to adopt. Second. I'm not putting the whip out hard enough right now, I feel like. <laughs> um, roll call, please. Uh, Court Commissioner Jacobs? Yes. Councilman Nicola? Yes. Commissioner DeVille? Yes. Mayor Mahoney? Yes. And then you also have the extension for the... I just need to have it. The extension does not, under our new purchasing uh, ordinance, does not require, since it's only a time addition, does not require uh, commission approval. Let's just let the commission know that we are doing but an we extension. Are, we are doing so. an extension. It's just a time <laughs> extension for the paperwork. And the fact that they got a little bit of a late start. And this is for the tot lot? The tot lot, right, yes. So I'm signing it now, just so that everyone's fully aware of it that I'm signing it on behalf of the town. Okay, so um, with that being said, um, item G was already removed. I guess we'll take a recess until they get here. And he said he's on his way. He ran into some horrible traffic. Okay. The auditor. Okay. You know, we have H, um, announcement holiday toy giveaway. So Thursday, December 19th, 2019, from 4 o'clock to 9 o'clock p.m. here at City Hall, which is 3150 Southwest 52nd Avenue. We will be doing the holiday toy giveaway for the community. Um, the kids had to be pre-registered by last Friday in order to receive a toy um, through our holiday giveaway, but it's a fun day for the kids to come here to City Hall. Something. I hear something. Oh, okay. oh that's Front Adobe. Door. That's that's probably him. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. So it'll be a fun-filled day for the kids. Um, they'll receive um, they'll receive a get a toy for for the holidays as well as a picture with Santa, and then we'll have some giveaways out back, dance contests, um, bounce houses, just a <clears throat> kids day here at City Hall you know, to show our residents we appreciate them and to wish them a happy holidays. So that is H, so we are taking care of that one. Can I get yes. some announcements or, and requests? Okay. Okay. Sorry about that. Oh, uh, we have to share. You know what, I have mine here. Right here. Chris no, that's okay. Here. Oh, he's here. They're here. Anyway, uh, we, we have, uh, I think you all have received an email from me they're having in which they corrected it for me. I thought we would be pulling names and giving toys, but that's not the way it goes. On Monday, the staff would like to have a uh, secret, it's not secret Santa, it's white elephant. And the way it works is everybody will be given a number. And if you're number one, you will pull a gift. And then if I'm number five, I can come and take your gift if I had been ironing it. And then uh, you would have to go back, it starts back over with you. And then if you're number 30, then you can pick any gift that someone has or off the table if one's left. So it's supposed to be fun. And I would like to, if you could, uh, allow us to close from 12 to 2 for the uh, because they want to have a potluck luncheon as well. And if you hadn't signed up yet, it would be nice to, if you would. And then the second thing, uh, staff, asked if they could be paid before Christmas, and I cannot authorize any of that. That's why I'm bringing it to you. Uh, I guess the 24th is when they would like to get paid, so they asked me to bring that forward. And then the other one is 1226. <laughs> it is the season to be giving. 1226, uh, uh, whether or not you've considered to give them off for the day after Christmas. Those are the three. You can take them up, ponder on them, after we go with Mr. Graw. Did I miss anything? No, you can. Yeah. Okay. Um, do y'all need a minute to think about any of it? I know we have a meeting scheduled for the 26th. Um, you do? Uh, we do? We have a meeting scheduled for the website that has to be posted. Oh, that's uh, not... So, um, so there'll be a few of us in here on the 26th. Um, so the building can't be totally closed. Um, does anyone have any objections to um, close, well, sending non-essentials home on the 26th? 
I'm not hearing anything from anybody. Nope. I'm hearing chirp chirps. So what days are we closing? They asked for the 26th. The 25th is a holiday. It's a federal holiday. Right. The 24th, they want to get the checks early. If they're not asking to be out on the 24th. They would like to have their checks early for the 24th. Go right ahead. Uh, Chris, uh, as far as the, ch the, uh, the checks, can we do that? Are we allowed to, uh, or do they have to wait? No, for their yeah, checks? The pay, pay period is already, the pay period no, is I don't already, know already, how that is works. Is our pay period has already been completed, correct? And, and the funds have been earned? Yes. Yes. That's the situation, then, it, it, yeah, it, it wouldn't be a problem to, to go ahead and, and issue the checks, um, would it, would it would otherwise be issued on Friday? Yes, they issued on Friday. Okay. Asking to okay. asking to wish them, uh, issue them on Wednesday. Yeah. As long as it yeah, it doesn't affect any of the any of the, uh, the, the compensation. Mm -hmm. it should be. It's just that um, payroll would have to um, do certain things to make sure it happens because it has to be into uh, the company at a certain time. I'm on the so two days before. By Monday, so it can be loaded up and um, be there. So I guess actually the, it becomes more of a uh, procedural issue as to whether that would be something that they can accomplish in time. Finance right. director can just talk to be talk to you about that later. Mm -hmm. Go right ahead. Okay. And um, Salter's uh, manager. Um, now you're saying so. The 20 or Monday, which is the 23rd, correct? Right. Okay. They would work a half a day? No. No. Oh, no? Just time enough just to lunch and do the little thing. Oh, I see. They go I, back to work. Oh, they go back to work. Yeah. And then Thursday, we would give them the day after Christmas. The day after Christmas off. Can I ask you, does any of the other municipalities, do they allow, do they do that? Or Chris is, you don't know? Yeah. It's up to the commission. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I know we used to give them, didn't we give them like a half a day? Um, Madam Mayor, didn't we give them a half a day off? In the yeah, we, um, like the day be before? Yeah, we'd give them uh, Christmas Eve. We used to give a half a day for, um, we used to do a half a day for Christmas Eve. Sometimes we also did half a days for um, Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving Eve so that they could spend time with their family preparing, you know, their meals and things like that. Um, so it's, it's completely up to commission. Um, I know you just said you yep. had something you wanted to add in there, so go right ahead. I, I, I personally feel paydays are paydays. They just stay where they are. And, uh, oh, I'm sorry. Move this closer. I, I think paydays are paydays and need to stay where they're at. I, I don't think we need to be making exceptions and moving, moving days around just because there's a holiday that happens. Um, we need to stay consistent in everything that we're doing here. Um, second of all, um, I don't think we should be giving off a full day on the 26th. We have a lot to do around town, and there, you know, Christmas is a federal holiday. That's the actual holiday, so um, I don't believe there's a reason to be taking the 26th off. Would you be opposed to us giving a half a day on that's Christmas Eve? I'm thinking. That's what you want to go with, yeah. Yeah, I would. That's what I would think, and that gives them time to be with their families and gather, you know, what they have to do. I think that's doing pretty fair. And there was a half a day, and that would be Monday. No, wait. Or no, Tuesday. No, they're working all day Monday. They just take oh, those two hours. Tuesday? That's, that's the they 26th was, was, oh, Tuesday. was the day after Christmas. That was the reason why they asked okay. for that one. So Tuesday, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So are you all okay with giving them a half a day on Tuesday? I would I would be in favor for that. Yes. Is I'm in favor okay? for half a day. Yes. On Tuesday. But I disagree with Jacobs. I think they can they should get paid early just because some people don't have you know funds for the holidays or to get last minute shopping that sort of thing. So uh, I would agree to let them get paid early. And I'm in favor for that as well. Okay, so, Chris, do you need a vote on that? Yes. Okay, so then uh, 
And Jean? I have one more thing, Mayor. Okay, go ahead. Is this okay, Attorney Ryan? That they work a half a day? Is it? Yeah, you want to give them their half day off, yes. Okay, I just want to make sure. Yes. Each yeah. One of yeah, oh, yeah, it matters to you. Yeah, take the matter separate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, all of separate. Yes. Yeah. Address, yeah, the different issues to address. Yeah. Okay. Addresses to pay. Okay, so can I, I'll entertain a motion that the employees get paid on what day was it, Monday, you said? No, but the 24. The 24. Okay. I'll entertain a motion that the employees get paid on the 24. And I'll second that. No, somebody got to make the motion. I just oh, entertain oh, the motion. Okay. So I'm sorry. just stating it for you. <laughs> I make a motion that the employees get paid on the 24th of December. And I'll second. Roll call. Um, uh, Mayor Mohammed? Yes. And I'm always the last one to vote. Do you remember that? And <laughs> <laughs> I started the vote. Commissioner so <laughs> Deville? Yes. Uh, Councilwoman Cohen? Yes. Clerk Commissioner Jacobs? No. Um, and Mayor Mohammed? Yes. Okay, then I'll entertain a motion to um, give the employees a half a day on Christmas Eve. Yes, I'll make the motion that we allow our employees here of the town to work a half a day Christmas Eve. Is there a second? I second. Okay, roll call. Um, Dina first. Count, Councilwoman Cohen? Yes. Councilman, um, Councilman DeVille? Yes. Um, Clerk Commissioner Jacobs? Yes. And Mayor Muhammad? Yes. Okay. What was the third one we had? That was it, because the other two ones. Two hours on Monday. It ended just the two hours on Monday. That's all we have left. Okay, two hours to close the building. 12 to 2. Okay. Do we need a motion for this? No, well, uh, you all have to approve any time off. Uh, but y'all will be here. We're just going to no, we'll be here. No, 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 Okay. okay, thank you. Okay, thanks. Okay. On behalf of the staff, thank you. Okay. Um, so we're going to go back to new business. 2017-2018 um, financial audit. Uh, we have Tony Grau here to do his presentation on the audit. So please come on down, Tony. Okay. And you all have copies in front of you. I emailed it to you earlier this morning. Uh, but you have copies in front of you. Okay, good evening. I'm Tony Grau with Grau & Associates, and I'm here to go over the audit for fiscal year September 30th, 2018. Um, obviously, you just got the audit today, so I don't know how much time any of the commissioners have had to go through it. Um, so, you know, obviously we had issues doing the audit. We're all aware of that. So I would prefer... Excuse me, Mr. Grohl. Yes. They were given about a week ago, whenever you sent me the draft. Okay. And then we just got the final this morning. Okay. But they have everything. Things were in the draft, but the response to the findings were not in the draft. So the, that is now in the final report. Um, so as far as, um, you know, any questions you have related to the audit and, um, you know, the issues that we brought up, you know, I'm here to address that. If you want me to go through the numbers, you know, which are now um, over a year old, you know, we can certainly do that, you know, but I think um, the main issue is, um, you know, if you have any questions as to our findings and the, um, you know, the responses associated with it and how that impacted the financial statements, we basically have a qualification on the financial statements related to, you know, the issues, you know, that related to the overtime payment on the hurricanes and also on the PTO payments that, um, you know, management doesn't agree with our position, at least as far as, um, you know, their position is that it was approved back in 2004. Um, so that, you know, that is um, something we just don't agree on. So um, but as far as um, any questions you have, that is the main issue that, that we had during the audit. You know, the other findings, you know, there were a lot of issues that came up, you know, 
There was a lot of turnover during the fiscal year 2017, 18, you know, including the, you know, the, the town manager that was here for a long time, and then the finance director leaving, and then not having a finance director, and then, you know, same thing with the managers. A couple of them went, came and went. There was a period of time where um, there was no town manager, and it was, um, I believe, um, uh, Mr. Larson and uh, Ms. Joseph were the ones co-running the town so you know obviously a lot of things came up and as you know we did additional procedures because of some of the things we found um, so there there were a lot of findings so I mean you've had them so you know I'm here to answer your questions so I think that would be the best way to go with this instead of me going through one by one because I really want you know to address whatever concerns you have or whatever questions you have as to the audit which is what you have in front of you. Well, again, we just got the final report. Um, but I do have, if you could turn to page 60, uh, 63, sir, sir. Which page? Uh, 63. Yes. You can explain where it says, I just want to be sure. Uh, where it says recommendations management under the direction of the commission must follow up um, on how this occurred and how to determine if fraud or other illegal acts may have occurred and it goes on but if you can ex explain to me okay exactly okay as um, you know auditors we have to follow certain standards so if we come across a situation that, um, you know, doesn't appear, you know, we, we have an issue with it. It doesn't look like, um, you know, the procedures are followed or there could be a potential for fraud or illegal acts. Then, you know, what we do is we go to, you know, if we knew if it was at a certain level, we go to one level above it or in this case go to the town manager who wasn't involved with any of this stuff to begin with. and. We try to see. I'm well, so, what have I'm you? Sorry to stop. You're, when you can you step back um, when you said the manager to see if the. Okay. I just want to have okay, a. We, okay. We. Okay. We find something and it it looks like there's a problem with it. Put it bluntly. So then, you know, we bring it to the attention of, you know, whoever the, the manager. manager is. Okay. Or if we feel it's necessary, bring it to the petition of someone of the commission or the entire commission so that they're aware that this issue has popped up, which we did through our letters. Mm -hmm. So, but not only is it, you know, bringing it to the attention of the management of the town and the commission, you know, we need to um, try to follow up on it and see, you know, if something has happened, then um, management is then supposed to look into it to see, you know, why it happened and, um, you know, and give us some sort of explanation so we can then have, you know, more um, information as to, you know, what's going on here. And that's what we're required to do. And, you know, as far as these issues, you know, we had a very difficult time, you know, getting information as to, you know, we had the documents that we that we got and we saw things on there that didn't look right. And then we requested more information and specifically with this issue, what we got was this document that um, was half a page with two paragraphs. and. You know, when we found out about it, we were told that, you know, this, that's it. This is the policy. So that's not, you know, in an entity like a town or any, you know, which is everything's very structured. You're supposed to have procedures. You know, it's not referenced to anything. It wasn't tied into anything. It wasn't in the personnel manual that we were given in 2016 before these transactions occurred. So... This is back in um, June, Vanette, who was the auditor when she first saw, 
you know, that the um, OIG was looking into these things and um, got some information on it. She was given that piece of paper. So um, over the period from June through, you know, into November, you know, as we did additional procedures, you know, we never, no one ever told us where it came from. We had, we would ask and we didn't know where this, you know, document came from. What year was that? Excuse me? What year? Just now. Oh, I'm okay. saying when we're doing the audit, okay. we Just found out about sure. it in June 2019. Okay. We pulled out of the audit because um, we had these issues and we needed to find out more. And then we didn't hear from the town until um, the new town manager was hired in August. And I came back out here. And then I requested information about the OIG investigation to see if there was any more requests that were made from what we found out in June. And the original request was in January. That's one of the reasons we pulled out, because we had to try to get a handle as to what's going on with this because we were never told that there was a, another, the second investigation had started back in January, and we had been there for, you know, from March through June, off and on, and we sort of found out about it by accident, you know, just because, I forget what exactly she did, but somebody told her, and then that's when we asked about it. So, when we come back in August, you know, we started, you know, we did, I started looking into you know what was going on and try to see how I could finish the audit and and then um, you know we're still not getting anything as far as where this document came from. So you know later on you know we we realized that we needed to do more procedures and that's when we you know, sent the letter saying that you know we needed to increase the fee and um, you know, it took a while for that to get resolved before it was approved. So we obviously didn't do anything during that time period. Then we came back, um, you know, I requested information, which was provided to me in a format where I could um, do the additional procedures. And we started doing the additional work. And at that time, I found out about the, um, the payments of the compensated absences, which was the second item on in the, um, you know, the half page you know there were two paragraphs in there so again you know we brought it up you know you know this looks like it could be an issue because we just have all we have to support this is this um you know sheet of paper with two paragraphs on it so then some more time went on and then um i called to discuss the situation and um nobody knew where the document came from and then um we were going to go forward and you know finish the audit with what we knew at that point and we would have probably ended up the same place we are now but then i got you know the letter from the town attorney they found that the document had been approved back in 2004. so you know so i took that at face value as being you know legitimate even though nobody knew about it um so what happened was you know, as I was preparing to, I was going to modify the findings and change them because now there was something in theory to support it, even though it should have been in the personnel manual because that's what the, the resolution states that the document should have been in, incorporated into the personnel manual. And the personnel manual that we got in 2016 did not have that document in there. So anyway, I started looking to see, you know, what else I could find out about this situation because 2004 is a long time ago and things could change. So what I found out was that the, the policies and procedures manual, um, which was dated 1997, has in there an amendment that specifically deals with vacation, sick, accrued time, and it was amended in 2000, um, not, no, yeah, 2009. When we were going through the procedures manuals, we no one ever noticed that um, part of it was from 2009, just because every page says 97 on until you get to that section, and all of a sudden it says 2009. So then that was brought to the attention of management that there's an inconsistency because you have you have something that was passed in 2004, but it's not in the um, payroll and procedures manual. Something was stuck in there in 2009. I don't know if in 2009 
whatever was approved then wiped out that original one or whether it was, uh, you know, I don't know, because I did, at that point, I never, since management took the position that the 2004 one was good, then we stopped. So if we wanted to look for, more into it, then we'd have to go back in the 2009 or try to find how that amendment got in the personnel manual and um, why that one was in there and why the other one wasn't. So there's a limit as to how much we're going to dig into this, especially if we want to complete the audit and, and the position of the management of the town is that the 2004 resolution is what matters and whatever's in the personnel manual, even though it's dated subsequent to it, doesn't. So I don't know what to tell you. That's, that's the issue. Excuse me, may I say something? Mm -hmm. In order to follow the trail, you would need um, the attorney's letter that went to Mr. Graw. Uh, when we asked for it in writing and we had a conference with him when we were starting back up the audit, we found out that it was an issue about the, the, that particular policy. It was placed in the policy manual as the resolution stated. When you all pass a resolution, you always have it supersede whatever you had in place, so it becomes kind of like your law at that time. The policy itself, if you read the response, uh, it was put into there, but it should have referenced that resolution. So it was not something that we drafted or came up with. You all, uh, the commission at that time, on uh, uh, resolution 041009, approved that particular policy for the hurricane and for the buyout of employees. Uh, and it, it said that that policy was to go into the manual. And what they should have done, and I'll pass this for you, because this is the policy here itself, and that was provided to Mr. Graw. Uh, we found the resolution that you all approved. And this is the sheet that he's referencing. And when you look at it and it doesn't have a reference to this resolution, then it does look like you just stuck it into somewhere. But I'll pass that down for you. Well, um, first of all, that wasn't given to us that way in 2016. No, because when I came on board, and then after we well, met, after we asked for, asked for it in writing, mm -hmm, I started okay. asking questions to see because there had to be a, po a resolution or something. So that's when Mr. Larson realized that it was. Then I went through all that book of resolutions under there, and we found it and sent it to, to uh, the attorney so he can draft a response. So here the commission decide the law of the land for the town. So it was approved by the commission at that time, and, I, and that particular policy was to be inserted into the policy. And I also said at our review, and even if you look at the fact, we have just hired a HR attorney, not attorney, but a consultant. We are going through completing, and we take what you said, the policy may not have gone all the way the same, but we are in the midst right now of revisiting all of those policies, and they will be brought back to the commission, and I think that's what we reference in, the, uh, in our response. So the resolution, and if you would pass it on down there, it was approved by the commission itself, and that sheet on the back of it was approved by the commission. No, I understand that, okay. but that's not the point. The point is that there's something in there that conflicts it. So where did that come from? Okay, so I don't know. The policy that we got, and there was nothing in there related to the you know, little two, two paragraphs, talks about there is no payout of vacation. It's paid, on, it's paid out upon um, the employee leaving you know the um, town, so that right. So that got in there somehow. Now, without finding how that got in there, then you know, yes, you could go back. If nothing ever happened from 2004 until you know 2017, 18, then because you just changed the you just changed something right now where someone's going to get you want to pay them a week a day early and give them a half day off or whatever you know I don't know everything that's happened from 2004 to 2016 so 
yes, you can take that position, but that still doesn't change how we feel about the finding or the qualification. That's our opinion on it. Right. And, so, and that's why we're going to take it because the policy does need to be rewritten. And I think that's why we said that we, the town has gone as far and wrote and hired our HR consultant. And we are starting to go through all of those policies and they will be rewritten and brought back to the commission for approval. Okay. I mean, and that's all we can do. Uh, it happens yes, I mean, if that's, all of us were here. <laughs> right, I know that you weren't here and this all happened when you weren't here. And, you know, it's just not enough ed evidence for us. Okay. okay, it's as simple as that. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, I'm just going to state for the record that um, as far as the, as the payout for the additional payout for the vacation leave, um, we had some internal staff meetings last year when we did the salary changes and in order to help the employees with that salary cut that they took we did the buyout at the last um right before the salary change to kind of help those employees and that was a decision that um management and myself made in order to help the commission i don't remember if it was ever brought back to the commission um for a formal vote but there was there were meetings that happened it wasn't just a willy-nilly event that occurred no there i can were, yes. i could see yes you know something like that happening but yes. you know and the other issue that we had is you know since the minutes weren't up to date we couldn't tell um you know what was happening you know because there were a lot of minutes that um you know all we had was the agenda or, and a lot of them were still in draft, even though, you know, we accept that as, the, you know, the minutes for the town, um, <coughs> you know, you were way, way, way behind on the minutes. So that created other issues as far as trying to get enough evidence to figure out what happened here. So, I mean, generally when, it, when you have procedures and as they're being changed, you know, they're referenced to, you know, what the, Either you go through and you redo the whole policy and then you th scrap the other one or you amend it and it's reference to, you know, what's current at this point in time. So we can't tell what was current at the point in time that these payments were made based on the evidence that was provided to us. So that's about the best I can do. And um, it's not really up to me to figure out anything more about it. That's, that's our opinion. And then... Um, you know what happens afterwards you know it's out of my control but we wanted to finish the audit and we couldn't go on forever trying to figure this out and i know um the town has to move forward and get things done but um you know that's what held us up and you know if we had more information and we had a clear trail you know going back to you know 2004 this was um the policy and then whatever happened in 2009 didn't supersede the, the 2004 and we could see a clear trail of what the policy was and it would have been it would have been a finding we would have seen what you know what happened you know but you know you also take in consideration the chain of events that occurred you know during um 2017 2018 you know when this was done you know, you have the town manager leaving in January, you have the finance director leaving, you have, you know, the policy says that the manager um, can make this decision, but we have no evidence that the manager made the decision for the payment in new November, but we did see where the manager took 80 hours out. So um, does that mean he approved it? Well, he definitely signed the form like every other employee did. and. And the document, which is just like a memo saying that, you know, this, you can take this, you know, if you meet the requirements and you can take, get paid for the 80 hours and, um, you know, just sign below and then you would get the check. And that came from the former finance director. It was in her name. And then in July, when it happened again, and it's only supposed to happen once, that's what the policy says, once per year, not twice. So without formally changing it, you know, we're seeing all these things that look like, you know, people are just getting paid. 
And then the payment in July, the memo doesn't come from anyone specific. It just says finance department. You know, that's, so it's just, um, the you know, the documentation, um, it's either, you know, you could speculate all sorts of different ways as to what actually happened. I don't know. But as an auditor, the documentation is insufficient to um, justify those payments, in our opinion. And that's basically it. I mean, the other findings we had, you know, they're significant in the sense that, um, you know, there was a lot of lack of controls, you know, which is not, you would sort of expect when you have that kind of turnover. And we had findings even before you had all this turnover. So it's very hard to fix the old findings when you have people leaving and all this turmoil. And then so obviously we had the old findings for the most, some of, I think a couple of them might have gotten cleared, but then a bunch of other stuff popped up this year. You know, but that, those by themselves did not affect the um, us issuing the audit like the payroll one did. So, and if you have any other questions, you know, related to what's in the report, I can go over it. Yeah, um, the credit card, the credit card policy. We have a credit card policy that the commission up voted on and approved, and every person who's issued a credit card has to sign off on it, stating that, you know, they have to provide the receipts if there's taxes that aren't covered, that, you know, if mm. you didn't follow the policy of getting the taxes re waived, then you're responsible for the taxes, things like that. Did you not receive a copy of that? Because here it says that we don't have a credit card policy, and I know we do, and every person who's issued a credit card has to sign off accepting it, the terms of the policy. Well, whatever the policy was, you know, during and that was the period. two years ago. Um, two, three years, whenever we switch from the American Express. All I know is Fargo. that um, whether you have a policy or not, the support mm -hmm. for the credit card payments was inadequate in many of the mm -hmm. cases. And um, there were numerous credit cards. I mean, five, six, seven at mm -hmm. one point. And um, you know, when the policy, you know, maybe that should have been worded that the policy needs to be revamped because it was um, not clearly being followed, and there were too many credit cards, and there were too many instances where support for the um, charges on the credit card were inadequate or you can't tell the business purpose related to the charge. You had, um, you know, there was the credit card, there was a credit card that was in the name of the town manager that the town was paying, you know, for years. And that, even after he left, that there was, um, that, that remained open and he continued to make payments on it. Now, as far as I can tell, he wasn't using it, but, um, you know, there were employees that were still using um, a credit card from that was in, not in the name of the town, but in the name of the town manager, and you know that should have been well, never should have occurred to begin with. But um, as soon as um, he left, the card should have been canceled immediately. Now, or just ignored. If you can't cancel it because it was in the name of him, then you know whoever had them here should they should have been shredded, and that was the, that should have been the end of it. Mm -hmm. But payments were made after he left on that credit card. And I'm not talking just about the payments for, you know, because there's a delay. We're talking going into March or April. You know, so there's no reason for that card, payments to be made on that card when he's, he's not even there. And we know that it shouldn't have been set up that way to begin with. You know, we're, def we're aware of that issue. And, um, and when we, yeah, we've taken care of that at the time. The town didn't actually have credit. The town still really doesn't have the best credit rating. And so the town wasn't eligible and there were charges that were pending on the card. That's why there was that late, there was that lapse because there were conferences that were booked that had not occurred and hotels and things like that. So that has been remedied, but there was, there was a layover period in the process for that. And another thing we have said is that the audit will be taken and we are in the process of developing policies and procedures to prevent some of the things in the past. And um, moving forward, um, we will have things in place to uh, take care of that. Yeah, that's the whole, that's 
what this is for, to try to you know, fix the things that aren't working and make improvements so it doesn't happen again. Looking forward to. We have a manager now in place, and we're open for positive change. Okay. And one good thing, our numbers and your numbers did match, thanks to uh, our finance director. The trial balance and everything was clean. And to be, believe it or not, he's already entered the CAFRA information in so we can send the rest, this part, to the Auditor General. And for you to know, this audit does go to the Auditor General. Mm -hmm. And they will look at it. I know they will look at it because, number one, we're late. So what will happen, they will also render recommendations. So, but we, as a town, <coughs> we're going to take everything that we're given and develop and make our policies better. Okay. are what they are it is, and yep. it is what it is and thank you for your hard work yeah it was hard I'll tell you that okay <laughs> it wasn't easy Resolution of the Town Commission of the Town of Pimper Park, Florida, accepting the annual financial report and audit report for the fiscal year ending uh, September 30, 2018, uh, superseding conflicting resolutions and providing an effective date, uh, whereas the town is required by Section 218.32 Florida statutes and Section 18 of the Charter of the Town of Pimper Park to prepare an annual financial report for each fiscal year of the town. And whereas the town is also required by Section 218.39 uh, Florida statutes to complete an annual financial report of the town's accounts and records prepared by an independent certified public accountant, unless the Auditor General notifies the town that it is conducting the financial audited, uh, audit. And whereas the town has prepared its annual financial report for the fiscal year ended September 30, 2018, and whereas the town has not uh, been notified that the financial that a financial audit uh, for the fiscal year ended. Uh, September 30, 2018, will be performed by the Auditor General and has retained the, the uh, firm of Ground Associates Inc., uh, certified public accountants, to audit the financial statements of the town, and, uh, the town for the fiscal year uh, ending 20, September 30, 2018. Uh, whereas both the financial uh, report and annual uh, annual financial audit report for the fiscal year ended September 30, 2018, have been completed. And Town Commission desires to accept the reports at this time. Now, therefore, be resolved by the Town Commission and Town of Park 4, Section 1, that the Town hereby accepts the annual uh, financial report and annual financial audit report for the fiscal year ending September 30, 2018, for the Town of Pembroke Park. It said report has been on file with the Finance and Budget Director and by reference made a part hereof. Uh, section 2, that all resolutions are parts of resolutions in conflict herewith, being the same or hereby superseded to the extent of such conflict. Section 3, that this resolution shall be enforced and take effect immediately upon its passing adoption. Motion to adopt. Second. Roll call, please. Yes. Motion by uh, uh, Commissioner uh, Cohen, seconded by Commissioner DeVille. Uh, Commissioner Cohen? Yes. Commissioner DeVille? Yes. Uh, Vice Vice Mayor Clark, uh, sorry, Vice Ma uh, I'm sorry, Clerk Commissioner. Commissioner Jacobs, sorry, yes. and Mayor Mahalan. Yes. Motion thank you, Tom. Okay, thank you. Have a good night. Okay. Well, we lost Commissioner comments on this agenda. <laughs> Did anyone have anything they wanted to add? Right. Oh, Good work. Happy holidays. <laughs> Happy holidays to everybody. <laughs> Happy holidays to everyone. Well, I'm just, hold on, I'm just gonna, um, I'm, I had a meet and greet with the businesses in the city to discuss um, economic development. And so these are some of the flyers that we have in dealing with the county for small businesses that can either register as a small business with the county and also um, 
they have two different programs. And so I have the documentation here to leave at the front desk for anyone who's interested in becoming a certified business with the county so that they can either A, get projects without having to bid for them, or B, um, get special notification of projects that are available to be bid on. And so um, we, I had a meeting with Sandy McDonald and several businesses in the city, and we it was a very productive meeting. Uh, a lot of the businesses are interested in that. I um, He's available for any questions and how to get certified as a small business or as a um, as a certified vendor for the county to get projects. Mayor, Ma Mom, and Jimmy, just speaking about it. Okay, and um, there were a couple businesses that had some concerns that we need to look at addressing in the near future. And with that, I will say um, I also want to thank New View Optical because they'll be coming out tomorrow to provide our children with eye exams during the toy giveaway. And so um, I look forward to working with them and building a relationship with them for the town. And other than that, happy holidays. And I just want to wish everybody, our BSO that's sitting in the back there, a happy, safe holiday and uh, many blessings to you and many blessings to everybody and their families. Happy holidays. God bless. Looking forward to a better, uh, better year. Chris? I'd just like to uh, say thanks to everybody who's expressed their concerns for my health and feeling better. And uh, happy holidays to everyone. Enjoy your Merry Christmas or Hanukkah or whatever festivities. And um, best of wishes for uh, 2020. Yeah, you all took care of <laughs> those for the employees earlier, so thank you. Mr. Daltry. Happy holiday to everyone. We pray that each of you have a blessed holiday. Same as his comments. And I'll ditto that, too. <laughs> and we're going to get Chris out of here so he can go back to resting. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I was, surprised, I was very yes. surprised to see yes. you today. <laughs> Marla? I just would like to say thank you all. I wish you the very best for the upcoming year and continue to moving our town forward. So thank you all. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. I'll do a Can I get a motion first? Motion Seconding to adjourn. Entertainment. <laughs> thank you. Yes. All in favor? Aye.